I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor to defend His cause. Maintain the honors of His word, the glory of His cross. Hello, I'm James Brown, and on behalf of the East End Church of Christ, located in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to welcome you to Saturday's edition of Walking Through the Bible podcast where we seek to study the Bible and the Bible alone. Please stick around afterwards for information on how you can contact us. But for now, if you have a Bible with you, please turn to the book of Genesis and we'll turn you over to Jeremy Disekamp for our study of the day. Thank you, James, and welcome to all of our viewers. This is the 53rd lesson in our study of Genesis. Yesterday, we covered Genesis chapter 15, verses 12 to 21 discussing how God re-established his promise to Abram and further explained how Abram's descendants would inherit the land of Canaan. If you missed that episode and would like to watch it, you can find it and all of our other podcasts on our website at www.eastendchurch.org. You can also find them on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Christ under the Walking Through the Bible Genesis playlist. Today we're going to begin with Genesis chapter 16, verse 1, and read through verse 6. The text that you'll see on the screen is from the English Standard Version, but you're welcome to follow along with any version that you have. So let's now read Genesis 16, beginning at verse 1. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant, it may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarah. So after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. And he went in to Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. In chapter 15, God reestablished his covenant with Abram, saying that his descendants would possess the land of Canaan. There was just one problem. Abram and Sarai had no children. Abram mentioned this to God in chapter 15 when he stated that Eliezer was his heir because he had no children. God told Abram that Eliezer would not be his heir. Even though Abram was a man of faith, for he did believe God would do what he said, from time to time Abram thought it necessary for him to try and help God out. This showed that Abram had a little difficulty with patience. If you recall back in chapter 12, when famine came to Canaan, instead of waiting for God to tell him what to do, he went down to Egypt where there was food. He knew that God wouldn't let him die, so he was going to help God out by ensuring that didn't happen. We know that Abram got himself into trouble with the Pharaoh of Egypt and was expelled from the country. In this chapter, Sarai decides that since God has yet to provide her children, Abram should marry Sarah, Sarai's handmaid, Hagar, and then go in and have sexual relations with her in order to produce a son, which God would then make the son of promise. Abram didn't see anything wrong with that, so he listened to Sarai's voice. This occurred at about the time that Abram was 85, 10 years after they came to Canaan. And you know what? The first part of their plan worked. Hagar conceived. As we'll see later, the second part of the plan would fail as God would not accept this child as a son of promise. However, before we get to that, let's finish off today's reading. Once Hagar had conceived, she looked at Sarai with contempt, meaning that she looked down on Sarai. This, of course, was because Hagar could conceive and Sarai could not. It was not a righteous response by Hagar, but it is easy to see why this was her response. Feeling slighted, Sarai got angry, so angry that she went to complain to Abram. 
I find it ironic that Sarai blamed Abram for what had befallen her when it was Sarai's idea to have children by a Hagar in the first place. It teaches us when we deviate from the will of God, we shouldn't be surprised when bad things happen to us. Abram gave Sarai full power to deal with her handmaid as she pleased, something which Sarai did swiftly and harshly. This treatment caused Hagar to flee. With that, our time is up for today. Please join us, the Lord willing, tomorrow for the question and answer edition, as well as the weekly sermon edition of this podcast. This week's question is, are women inferior to men? Well, the sermon will be titled, Salvation by Grace. We will continue our study of Genesis, the Lord willing, on Monday, beginning at Genesis 16, verse 7. Thank you, Jeremy. And to our viewers, we also thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Should you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below or email us at answerintheword at gmail.com. We'll try to respond to you as quickly as we can. We hope you'll join us, the Lord's willing, tomorrow when we'll be presenting two episodes. One is a question and answer session, while the other is a sermon from God's word. Goodbye for now. Have a great day. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord.